Welcome back to the Penn State Extension Dairy Cash Flow Plan tutorial. Now we are going to look at how much it costs to produce each crop on the farm. We're going to start by looking at the crop name that we included in our ration sheet. We want to write down every single crop we are planning to grow this year on the farm. This includes crops that we are feeding to our animals as well as crops we might sell. We want to find a definition for each crop name that we have entered. Because we're growing alfalfa to be used as both hay and hay ledge, we're going to choose other here. We want to find corn grain, soybeans. These are just a few of the general descriptions for each crop. Your crop may not be included here, and that's not a problem. Simply choose other. Next, we want to define if the crop is a double crop. We're going to select the secondary crop as a double crop and leave the primary crop blank. Now we want to include the total amount harvested for each crop during that growing season. For example, we will be growing 880 tons of corn silage. We want to enter the unit followed by the unit weight and then the number of acres we are cropping. In this case, we want to split out the acres that are owned versus the acres that are rented. We will be chopping a total of 40 acres of corn silage, 30 of which are owned and 10 of which are rented. For the alfalfa, we will be harvesting 450 total tons of alfalfa. All of the acreage for the alfalfa is on owned ground. For the corn, we will be entering our numbers in bushels rather than the tons. Simply write your unit here followed by the number of pounds in your unit. There are 56 pounds in a bushel of dry corn grain. We will then fill in the rest of the information for our soybeans and our ryegrass. Soybeans as well have been entered in as bushels. Next, we can enter the input costs for each crop in one of two ways. We can either enter the total for the crop in our seed, our fertilizer, chemicals, and custom hire here, or we can enter it on a per acre basis. Entering it on a per acre basis allows us to change the cropping plan and the number of acres we are going to produce with each crop and the, num and the seed and our input costs will adjust accordingly. If we were to enter the total for the crop, that total would remain the same regardless of how many acres we plan. Here we want to enter the input cost per acre for each crop. Once we have entered all of the input costs for each of the direct costs for each crop, we want to estimate the land rent per acre. If we know the exact rent per acre for each crop, we can include it here. However, if we only know the total rent, we can use this land rent estimator on the right to help us figure this out. We know that the total land rent paid per year is $21,100. Next, we look at the total number of acres. The acres are split between the total number of acres farmed and the total number of acres harvested. Because we have a double crop in the soybeans, we have two different amounts here. There are a total of 80 rented acres on the farm, but 30 of that have been double cropped, and so the total amount of harvested acres are 110 versus 80. We can do this both ways. We can include the rent at 80 acres and not include any land rent for soybeans. However, this would artificially make the cost for the soybeans cheaper than what the land rent is. In this case, we are going to use the land rent for 110 acres, which is 191 and 82 cents. 
we are only going to put the land rent on areas where we have rented land. For example, we are using all owned land to harvest the alfalfa. Now, we have the total direct cost for each crop. We can look at this in one of two ways. We can look at the total seed costs for the entire farm for a year, in this case, 15865 Or, we can look at the total direct costs for each crop. In this case, for corn silage, our total direct costs for a year are 14155 when we look up at the top, that gives us the total farm cost per ton to grow each crop. Remember that this is on a per ton basis, whereas the amount harvested could be in a bushel basis or other form of measurement. For our corn silage, it currently costs us $16.08 to grow a ton of corn silage when we just look at the direct costs. However, we cannot simply look at direct costs. We also have to look at the overhead expenses that contribute to the cost of growing these crops. Before we head on to that, we want to enter the labor hours for each crop here in this row. There is a handy table for determining how many labor hours are spent on each crop that was developed by Iowa State. You can use this table to come over and determine how many la labor hours per crop we usually spend. This will help to determine the breakdown on how much time an owner-operator spends on the cropping enterprise versus the dairy enterprise. We will go through and enter in the labor hours. Remember, for crops that have multiple cuttings, such as alfalfa or grass hay, we want to include labor hours for the total number of cuttings. If for alfalfa silage, we are chopping the silage in five different cuttings, the labor hours will be two hours per cutting, or ten hours total. Once we have these labor hours figured out, this will help us determine the total percentage breakdown between the crops and the dairy. We use a dairy management standard of 55 labor hours per cow, multiplied by the total number of cows on the farm, to give us an hourly percentage breakdown between the crops and the dairy. In this case, 17.8% of the time that we spend on the farm is devoted to crop production, and 82.2% of the time is devoted to the dairy production. We will see how this fits in in a minute. Now, from your records, take your total expenses on your related operating expenses, such as fuel and oil, utilities, taxes, other leases, and management, and enter them in this column. Once we have entered all of these information in, we will go through and apply the percentage of the crops in our time in this column. This helps us start to determine the percentage of time that we use on the cropping side or the percentage of the overhead expense that needs to be allocated to the crops. In this case, of the total of $7,500 a year that this farm spends on fuel and oil, 1,335 of that will be devoted to the cropping enterprise. You can adjust this percentage based on how your farm actually fits. For example, if the hired labor that you are spending on the farm is only devoted to the dairy and you do all of the cropping enterprise yourself, this percentage would be zero. However, for example, we will go through and use our standard 17.8 for all of the expenses. One key to remember in this program is that you can only type into areas that are shaded in yellow. Before entering in these numbers, I had an error come up on my screen, which implied that I was not able to enter anything into one of these clear markers. This error means that it is protecting you from entering anything where a formula has been entered. 
We would also like to know what the family living expenses or earned draw, as well as your total loan payments per year in principal and interest are to help figure out the total cost on the dairy. We are going to use the same percentage to divide these costs out among the crops and the dairy. Now we have determined what the total cost to produce each crop on the farm is. When you scroll back up to the top, this farm cost per ton is now adjusted to reflect the total costs both for direct expenses and related operating expenses for each crop on the farm. Our corn silage now costs $24.31 per ton to produce. This is still below the market price that would cost you to purchase corn silage on the open market. Now as we scroll back to the bottom, we want to look at some of the finer points of our inventories. If we have a grain bank cost associated with the farm, we want to enter that. That will also impact the total cost for producing each crop. Next, we want to look at the total inventory on the year for each crop balance. We want to divide out that inventory between what will be fed on the dairy and what will be sold. In this case, we will be feeding all of our inventories to the dairy. If this were to change, we would adjust these amounts by placing some of the total inventory in the fed column and some in the sold. If we are selling part of the crop, we will enter the price per unit sold here in this row. Once we have entered all of this information, we are now ready to move on to the final step in this crop cost calculator.